My name is Carla Jade Williams and I am an occupational therapist. Okay, hi, um, my name is Brandon Weber. I am uh, the husband of Chantel and father to Shannon and Ashley. Uh, Shannon is 14 and Ashley is 11 years old. I serve as the managing director at Hope Africa Collective, a youth development organization in Philippi. Um, I went into the field of occupational therapy because I, I had a desire to care and serve people. My heart was always, since I was very young, my heart has always been to care for people and for especially the marginalized. So my heart was always, when I didn't understand why, my heart was always for those that are um, the poor, the kids suffering um, and disabled. Um, persons with a disability. My heart was always for those and I didn't understand why as a kid I had such a strong need to help these people. Um, I decided four years ago to start working at Hope Africa Collective out of a passion to see youth um, just reach their potential. Uh, we have such a problem in South Africa with youth unemployment. Um, and, and the whole problem of poverty. Um, we just live in such an unequal society and so a lot of families suffer from severe poverty. And so, um, and also we have so many youth in South Africa. South Africa has a youth bulge, which means that uh, quite a large proportion of our population is between the ages of 18 and 35. I think occupational therapy has allowed me to bring my passion that I've always had for serving the community and my heart for community and for the marginalized and it's helped me with the skills and it's brought it together um, so well that I can now go out and serve the marginalized. I can serve in communities of underprivileged, I can serve persons with a disability um, and I can serve those that are don't have anything, that I can, that don't have anything else. So the learners that I work with, I generally see have um, the academics and social needs, like I said. So these learners, after about two years that I've been working with them, so I work with them in grade R, and then I'll work with them in grade one, or I'll work with them in grade one and grade two. And as the, I think the beautiful thing that I that I see is when they start growing up, or when they reach grade seven eventually, you see such a different child that you work. Work, worked with. Even after a few months, um, you see such a different child that has walked in your um, classroom. Um, those learners that have maybe come in with their hoodies over their, their heads that told themselves, I can't do anything. Um, and after they've just worked with me and just worked through a program that we work at, it's so nice seeing at the end just a different child, a happy child, a child that is now more confident to go out and try um, different things or try to do his best in the classroom. And I always ask the learners again when I see them like, how are you doing? And they'll just be like, ma'am, I'm trying. And I think that's the beauty of it. Like the fact that the child can recognize that I am worthy and I'm enough and you they like I've built that confidence and they have that self-confidence that they now need to move on to the next grades as well. I think that's important. More than academics, um, yeah, more than academics, I think the the need for for just the confidence of a learner and to know that they are worthy and that they are enough and where they can come from is not where it's going to end. I think um, yeah, what I always like my heart for the kids is really a, a big it's really a, a big one. It's really a big um, yeah, it's really big. So I always try and just encourage kids and build that bridge of I'm not enough and I can't do I can't do anything and my circumstances is where it's going to end just to encourage them. Um beyond that is what um drives my heart and just serve in that communities like I wouldn't want to leave these communities basically just 
to just for that just to build the confidence and you can see at the end like a different person um i think that's important for me but the last um question in like this is like why would you encourage people to serve communities so i guess there's a theologian called Steve de Grucci that that draws a very compelling line from the nature of God, who God is, God's being, being very God's being is congruent with God's doing. And so and so when we look into the word of God, we see that God is love and God cares for people. And so the way that that plays itself out in God's interaction with people is that God cares for those so in the old testament we see that God cares for the poor in society so he tells people not to harvest until the edges of the grain fields and so to leave some and i think that uh, you know God's heart is displayed in um his his intention for people to dwell in harmony in in relational harmony um but what happens is that we often don't see that in society and so god's picture for society is a picture of shalom which which means god's justice and god's peace um the challenge though is that when i look around me in cape town um we we don't see that that justice and that peace and so i feel like god calls us into that because god is god is working in society he's doing this but it's as if he's calling us to come alongside him and so as the church i feel like it's also congruent with who we are we are the people of god we are the people who god has called out of the world and to himself and so out of that um kind of conviction i feel like god calls us to serve and to serve communities ways where his image and his shalom needs to be displayed and find its fulfillment